Hello guys and welcome back to another Emperor tutorial. Today what I'm going to be covering is how to use GitHub Desktop to basically go ahead and make and merge repositories as a collaboration. So it's going to be a little bit different than the option that we have in Amp Creator for basically creating like a collaboration thing. The, the one in Amp Creator is a little bit buggy uh, because it's not fully... Um, supported there's some issues with it uh, this is a lot more stable version to actually work with if you have uh, large teams and stuff like that then I can show you how to use this in a collaboration type project so it does only support Mac OS and Windows uh, for the actual downloads and operating systems so uh, that's the only downside to it so if you have Linux it will not be supported as far as I can tell so outside of that download that application and then once you have it installed you should have something that looks uh, very similar to um, this kind of setup now you will have a, a little bit different page obviously but uh, it's pretty much the same thing so we're going to go to our actual repository uh, in our or organization now if you're not familiar how to make an organization you just go to organization and then you basically click new organization and then you'll have to set up a free plan uh, unless you want a paid one and that's fine too if you want to do that give it a name now this name has to be different from something that already is created on github so make sure that you have that set up any required things that you want uh, for your project so uh, this one, you'll need your email, and then you have to choose if it's a personal or um, business account. Usually, if it's mod or something, it's probably more personal than anything else. Then you just want to basically verify that uh, the icon, so you'd click the galaxy, and then you check that, and then you would basically click next and just follow the installer. So once you've done that, uh, what you want to do is you want to go to your organization uh, page this should be something like this you should have a organization here I have one called tutorial one and then you want to basically set up your repository so you go to repositories create new repository and give it a name so I'm going to call it tutorial and then this name basically has to be something different than is already in your organization compared to what's on github uh, for what version that you want to make it public or private. Uh, if you want your source code to be public, then you will want to set public. If you want it uh, private for no one to actually have access to it, uh, like to view the files and stuff like that, make branches and stuff like, you know, to actually contribute, you want to set private. I normally have all my source code on private, so that's fine, but you have to make sure that you invite people to actually help work on the project. Now you don't want to set any of these other settings, just make sure that you have the, one of these selected, your tutorial or your repository name and your organization has been selected. You don't need to give it a description, but you should only have these three things basically set. Once you've done that, just ignore all this part down here and then create new repository. Uh, once you've done that, what you want to do is you want to open with a setup in, des in the desktop and then you want to basically click the exe icon and then you want to basically create a um, can't find tutorials so we're going to clone again and it's going to actually offer you a system where to put it normally uh, I already had it set up in this particular tutorial uh, workspace so I'm going to try to cover that again uh, we're just going to go ahead and follow those steps again. So uh, we're going to remove and find the any repositories that are listed under tutorial one. Now we don't actually have that, so that's fine. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do that again. So we want to open in remote desktop and then it's going to prompt us where to put it. So I'm going to put it on our desktop under computer one and then I'm just going to remove that repository name after it so we can see where the source code actually goes. So this should be from our tutorial repository. This is where our repository path actually goes and then we're basically putting in what folder that we want it to be cloned to. So we're just going to clone that and it should be completely empty when we first start. There shouldn't be anything in it. 
um, no files or anything like that. So if we go over to our computer one, you can see we only have the git, git uh, directory here. So that's all that you should actually have in this repository at the very moment. Uh, once you've done that, uh, what you want to do is you want to actually close out of a remote, uh, close out of this, and then you want to get a workspace set up. So first things first, what we need to do is we need to actually create a new uh, workspace. We're just going to call it tutorial. And you can call it whatever you want, but I'm just going to keep it consistent so it's easy to follow. And then we're going to create new workspace. And this will take a couple seconds to set up. Once you see this window go away um, and console stop doing things, then what you can do is you can go and uh, go to workspace, show workspace folder, and then we want to be in that folder. So I'll wait until this is done and then I'll cut back in. All right, so it's finished processing. What we're gonna do is go to workspace, open workspace folder, and we're gonna close out of Mine or Amp Creator. Uh, for that repository and then what we're going to do is copy everything in this folder uh, Actually, we don't even need to copy it. We just need to drag it over into this folder right here So we're going to just drag it over to there. It's going to move all the files over and Then what we want to do is we just want to make sure that M creator is set up for this particular thing So what we're going to because we basically move the entire folder over it's not going to show in our list anymore because the M creator file is gone so what we need to do is we need to just basically um, grab that M creator fold file and then drop it in here and then it will open up that particular instance for it. So once we've done that, uh, what we want to do is close out M creator again. And we're just going to double check to see if it's actually set up in our repository. So it should say the uh, path here, it says tutorial. And then it gives us our path for desktop computer one. So that's good. It's all set up. Close out of that again. Now what you want to do is you want to go to uh, your desktop application or desktop app. And then you're going to see a whole bunch of files changed if you're under that particular uh, repository. So if you're not under the repository, make sure you're under the right one. And then what you want to do is you want to commit to the main branch. So basically all you need to do is give it a summary. Uh, make sure that all of these are checked. Now generally if they're, they're gonna be checked by default, but if you uncheck something by accident, make sure that it's checked. And uh, basically what the little green icons mean is things have been added to the, the repository. Yellow means things have been changed and red have basically means things have been removed. So because we're adding all these files directly to the repository, nothing has been changed because there was nothing in it. So and nothing has been removed because we haven't removed anything. So it should all be green when you first add it in. So once you've done that, just give it a summary. We're just going to say uh, first commit and we're going to commit to the main branch. Now this is, will be the only time that we actually commit to the main branch without merging, uh, creating a pull request. So do that. And then what it's going to do is say push publish to branch and you want to click that one. Make sure the branch is set up for the main, um, basically the main branch. Uh, this will take a couple seconds to do uh, with any amount of files. So once it's done that, you want to fetch origin and then that should be all set up. So we to double check, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our repository and click the refresh or reload, right click and reload. And then we should see all our files in here. So now that we've done that, uh, what we want to do is we want to create a new branch for this particular project. Uh, we need to go ahead and create on branches. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create new branch and then we're gonna set from source uh, or branch source and then we're going to set our branch from our main. Now this is the step that you need to do when you're creating a new version for your mod. Um, generally everything when you create this main branch it's going to be merged into eventually your main branch again. So for, for example if we call it version uh, 1.0.0 then this will be the version that we're basically working on. It's probably easy to keep it something simple, uh, something like a version number 
for the update that you're working on so it's easy to remember um, if you're working on a patch or something then you would do one if it's a uh, minor updates uh, like something that changes in new features and stuff like that then you would probably add one here or whatever number that in, in increases by if it's a completely different version of your mod uh, something that has changed everything you would basically set this version up here for two or whatever number that you have so because this is our first one we're just going to have one our v1.0.0 and that will be good enough uh, once we've done that make sure that it's on the right source branch and create create branch so now we should have that in here if we go over here uh, we're just going to fetch from the uh, existing thing and we're going to see that we have a origin slash version uh, than our version number so we're going to basically select that and we're going to fetch from this one and then we basically set up for what we need. So once we've done that, uh, what we want to do is set up our permissions for the people that want to actually collaborate. So we're gonna go to our settings, and then what we need to do is go to uh, contributors and teams, and then you want to basically go ahead and add people, and then you want to search up their name on GitHub. So they should be able to give you your their profile name. Uh, this will be basically, uh, we'll just open this in a new tab. Oh, wrong one. Uh, I'll view your profile and we'll create that in a new tab. It should be this uh, particular name right down here, the little, the one with the little text. So that's basically my repository. Um, Thing. If you don't know their profile, if they don't know it, then it should be the URL right here as well. So again, if we wanted to add Gold or Ion, uh, he's a pretty good friend of mine. So we'd go to Add People, and then we'd search up their name. So Gold or Ion, and he would pop up. So we'd add that, and then we'd add him as a writer. So what that allows them to do is basically um, create particular projects, uh, pull requests, uh, they're able to do pretty much everything, uh, including edit the files and stuff like that. You can also add them as admin if you're that close to them, but I suggest nothing any anything higher than maintainer, uh, just because it's um, security and stuff like that. Make sure that it's like writer. Uh, it can't be tri uh, triage or read only because they won't have write permissions but anything from this point up then they'll be basically be able to add the thing so you'd select that and then you would basically add uh, the invite for the repository and then they'll be able to edit certain things now when you're actually using the like have permission and you want to collaborate what you need to do is go to the repository copy this path at the top here you should have permission to view it now after you've accepted any um, things and then what you want to do is you want to go ahead back to your remote desktop or your github desktop and then you're going to just create a new folder we're going to call this one computer 2 computer 2 and then what we need to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and clone workspace clone repository and we're going to put that URL directly into this particular branch. And we're going to choose our folder that we want to basically select it in. So basically what this does is it's going to clone that particular repository. You need permission in order to do that. So that's why you're basically getting giving the person permission to view the URL and have access to basically write and stuff. Uh, then what we want what we need to do is set up the local path for that. Now I'm putting it under computer too, so it's easy for you guys to kind of see the process of setting up the workspace and stuff like that. So once you've done that, uh, what you want to do is, um, actually I just noticed I was wrong. You need to go under URL, and then you want to put that into the URL for the actual repository, and then set up the computer to and set it up that way so by default it will actually add the repository itself so we're just going to set the repository for computer 2 directly so i'm just going to remove that tutorial part after the end 
and we're going to clone it. And what this is going to do is it's going to clone the main branch. And we want to make sure that we're under the same version that we're currently working on. So we're going to set up the branch for the version of uh, version 1.0.0. And then we're just going to basically fetch from origin any time that we want to copy any files over. When you're starting off at the first time, then you want to basically copy that over. All right, so now that part's done, uh, we can actually go into mCreator now. We need to close out of the remote desktop or remote uh, the GitHub uh, desktop app. Uh, reason being is it can cause conflicts when you're working on mCreator and you don't want to do that uh, when that happens. So you just want to close out of this anytime that you're working on the project. So we should have two folders here with the same workspace. So this is our example one that we have for the tutorial. This is the exact same workspace as the one in this folder here. So if we move that over, you can see that it's the same files. So this is computer one. This one's already set up. Computer two is not set up yet for the mCreator one. So what we want to do is we want to just drag it over like we did with the other one. And then it will set up the workspace uh, like we have in the other one there. So once we've done that, uh, we're just going to add a simple block to our um, actual thing. But before we do that, we need to make sure that we're out of mCreator and then we're going to create a new branch. So we're going to go to our computer one. So if we hover over it, we can see what branch that, or what folder it's in. So this is computer one. We're going to create a new branch and we're going to call it dirt. This is what we're going to be adding to this particular repository and we want to clone it from that particular branch that we just added. Uh, so this is the one that we're working on the version for. We're going to create a branch and we're going to make that call from the version one. Now we're in a current branch called dirt. So that's what we're going to be adding. Uh, now we, we that we have that all set up, we can just close out of that. And then we're going to open up that particular workspace for the computer one. So computer one. Now, generally, you would only open up the one that you're currently working on. I'm using computer one and computer two to represent different people on different parts of the world that would basically be contributing. So when you, I reference to computer one, that would be a certain person working on a project. Computer two would be a different person. So now that we have this, uh, what we need to do is import a texture. So we're going to just select a block texture. I have one on my desktop for dirt. And then we're going to just quickly create a block. So we're going to call it block, uh, block of dirt. And then we're going to select our texture properties. We might want it to be more like dirt. Sounds like dirt. Uh, might want to have it uh, look like dirt as well on the map. Everything else is pretty much good. Uh, we might want it to generate uh, the surface and we might want it to replace regular dirt. And that should be good. So we'll just save that. Uh, now what we have basically done is we added a feature to our repository. Uh, but we need to actually merge it into the branch that we have. So we're going to close out am creator. Make sure that Gradle console basically is finished processing. It should say that it uh, has built successfully and that you're finished uh, compiling. And it says the amount of time that it takes. So once it's done that, just close out of it. And then what we want to do is open up our remote desktop our remote uh, our GitHub desktop app and you'll see some changes that have been added. So again, yellow is basically things that have changed. Green are basically things that have been added. And uh, red, we don't have any red, but uh, red are things that are removed. So what we want to do is we want to create a summary and just added dirt or a block of dirt of dirt. And then we're going to commit to dirt, which is our, our, our branch. Make sure you're under the, the branch that you created for the um, dirt one. Now, generally you want to basically make sure that it's relevant to what you're working on, just so it's easier for processing later. 
So again, we're under the dirt branch. We're going to commit to that. Now this one basically um, inherits the version that we're working on, which is version 1.0.0. So what we want to do is we want to create or publish a branch. And this will basically upload it to the dirt branch. Now, once it's done that, uh, it'll basically say create pull request. You can click on that or what you can do is just go to your desktop or the the GitHub repository and then go pull request. And I actually prefer to do it this way because it's easier for me to understand how the process works. And then what we're going to do is create new pull request. We're going to set our base version. So version one. Uh, 0 .0 0 .0, and then we're going to select our dirt and it's going to check for the availability. What this basically means is if it can be automatically merged into the workspace. Um, generally you want to see this green and exactly like this. If there doesn't say that then there's something wrong with that particular merge. Uh, probably conflict due to something else but if you're if both parties are pushing into the same uh, version not your main branch you should not have as many issues as if you were just to push it into a version branch like we're doing here so once we've done that uh, we can create pull request and then you can basically just set create pull request you don't even need to leave a comment and then it will check to see if it's available again and then you can basically merge pull request and commit to merge and then this icon up here will basically change to merge when it's done. Um, this basically means that everything that we basically created in the um, the dirt repository so we should have three repository branches in here. We have dirt this one says it's been merged and then this one basically is the changed version that we have. So uh, what we want to do now is we want to basically go and delete that particular branch that we added the dirt. We don't need it anymore, so we can just remove it. And that again is through the code, and then you click on the branches icon, and then it will basically say if it's been merged or not. So now we should only have the version and the main one. So now that we want to do for our computer to say somebody else wants to add a feature to that particular version, what we want to do is go to our computer 2 version. So this is our computer 2 version. And then what we want to do is we want to fetch from the version 1. Now if there's already a project in the works, what you want to do is basically create a commit from that. And it might say pull from origin. So you might have to click it a couple times. And it says unsafe changes. Um, I'm just going to click that one. And we're going to fetch again just to make sure. And we should have all the um, changes that are basically merged. So if we go into our computer uh, we should have elements and we can see that it's all set up for the elements. So we can actually start working on a new branch for a computer too. So what we need to do is we need to create a new branch. And again, this is going to be what we're going to be adding. So this is going to be mossy dirt. And we're going to select our branch that we basically just pulled from. So basically uh, fetched from. And then what we want to do is go ahead and close out of this. Open up our computer to workspace. So this would be on our other computer. And then what we want to do is you should see the elements that have been changed in here. So we can see that the dirt has been updated. We're going to add a new texture. So we're going to add a dirt, mossy dirt texture that I made. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just basically duplicate this element. So we're going to go block of mossy dirt. And then we're going to update the textures, and that should be good enough. So once we've done that, we might even want to basically specify our own mod. So we're going to just select the dirt one. So this one can basically replace the dirt itself. And that should be good enough. Uh, we can just basically save it. 
and then all our changes are done. Now we're going to make sure that console's finished doing its thing. And it will say when it's finished with the built successfully part. And then we can just close out of that, open up the remote desktop or GitHub desktop again, app again. And then again, you'll see that there's more changes. So that's fine. Uh, we want to make sure that we're under the current branch for the mossy dirt. And then what we want to do is for computer to what we're going to do is give it a name. So added mossy dirt. And we're just going to commit to the mossy dirt uh, branch and publish the branch. And then what we need to do is create another pull request. So we're going to open up the GitHub. So GitHub and then our repository. And then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and go to pull requests and then create new pull request. And we're going to select our base branch for our version. And then our mossy dirt branch for testing and then we're going to create pull request and then it's going to basically check to see if it's available we're going to create pull request it's going to check again and then we just need to basically um, merge confirm and once it's done merging this will update and then we can just del directly delete the branch as well so that will basically move over to our version one. And then you would just basically repeat this process for computer one and then computer two, computer one, computer two. Again, if you're on computer one, I will just go over to computer one. And we're going to just go to our branch that we created. And we're just going to fetch. This will pull all our changes in from our GitHub repository. So once this is done, uh, you should see in your repository uh, folder that we'll have uh, some other elements. Um, run elements folder seems to be missing on this one. We'll try pulling again. Okay, there we go. That should be set up. Uh, elements. So as you can see, we have elements set up here for the repository so hopefully that makes sense on how you can collaborate on a team now again i just want to point out that computer two would be a different person working on the repository and computer one would be a different person than computer two so that's basically the steps that you would do to kind of collaborate and work on a project and it's going to be a lot more stable than if you were to use the built-in um remote workspace uh, option for GitHub in here. So if we were to click on this and then go to remote workspace, you'd have to fill this out and stuff like that. And sometimes it actually comes with errors and then you're, you could have a corrupt workspace. Uh, this system with the desktop uh, app for GitHub has seemed to be more stable than the remote workspace. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. But outside of that, that's all for me. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time.